how's it going you guys welcome back to the needy homesteader channel and today we're gonna get, kind of do like a, a a throwback friday back in the day back before our tragedy um i used to do these things called fun fact friday where i would um share with you guys some of my favorite things that i use in my kitchen around my house things that i would get asked about kind of like um this week i was asked a lot about what bible i use for the journaling to be able to write in so i would do these videos kind of just sharing my favorite things i will leave a link to the playlist if i can up above I will definitely leave it down below in the description box and you can kind of go back and watch some of those old videos um but recently i've been getting a lot of questions about building the pantry and my pantry specifically which um i really want to start sharing with you guys on kind of um how i what i have in there what i store in there um and talk a bit more about what I did to build mine. But I'm going to tell you this. I want to share this with you. Because I'm going to share this book again. It's called The Prepper's Pantry. And I shared this book back in July of 2020. Now our accident was February 2021. And when I shared this book, I loved this book so much and when I first started building a pantry, you know, I followed a lot of videos with a lot of preppers and I bought a lot of things from my pantry that I ended up never using, that ended up going to waste and it was a pantry that just didn't work for me. Um, in here, in this book, she talks about, I don't know if I can find it, let me see if I can find it. She talks about different types of uh, pantries. Um, and that there are three different types. There's the bunker pantry, which she shows <laughs> like this, which is really like all your long term, you know, your um, your freeze dried, the things that you're packing in buckets with air absorbers, things that will last 10 to 25 years, 30 years. OK, that is how I originally started my pantry. Um, I did kind of a, a bunker to pantry, but it, 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 like I said, it just didn't work for me. The, um, the second pantry is the agrarian pantry, or a lot of people call it the grandma's pantry. And as you can see there, you know, all the home canned foods. I'm more like that. Um, and, and then there's a bargain pantry. And I'm kind of like this too now. <laughs> so I'm like, I'm like between these two. But when I read this book, I loved this book so much. And I remember sitting down and talking to Matt about this book. And I did that video and I'll leave the link up above so you guys can go watch that video. And I rewatched that video and honest to goodness, I cried. Because I did not know. Here I was again in my arrogance of I'm going to share this book. This book's going to help so many people. I want to help. I want to help. I want to help people. And little did I know that in that place, July 2020, the Holy Spirit was preparing me to help my family endure Ooh, the hardest period, at least of my life, of my children's life. Um, if you ask my dad, it might be the hardest part of his life. Um, I had no idea. I had no idea what would wait on the other side of seven months down the road would be waiting for us. I had no idea that this book would help my family, would save my family. We lived out of the pantry that I built out of because of this book for 10 months. I had people coming and going. And as they came, I had friends that would come and cook for us. Um, and 
everything that they did from um, from different people who stayed with us. My dad, uh, Danny, who would come and, and, and cook. Um, anyone that came to this house had a stocked pantry, had stocked freezers, and they didn't have to go buy anything. They didn't have to try to figure what we liked out. They didn't have to, they didn't have to do everything was at their fingertips because I had a well-stocked pantry. And I think at that time, I, I at least had a year's worth of food, um, maybe 18 months. 10 months we lived out of that pantry before I was physically able to go to a grocery uh, store and shop. And, um, and I remember I, I did the first big shopping I did with Danny and um, and he took me to uh, Costco in Sam's Club and we went to Meyer and Walmart we went to Aldi and I used one of those electric carts the the um, the electric carts that they have where you can sit and shop and I think I even have video of it I might even have video of it on my phone I remember <laughs> sending it to my girlfriend uh, Michelle who's been a, a longtime girlfriend of mine who came and stayed with us for a week um, and she cooked for us out of that pantry and um, and Danny helped me replenish it to get it back to another year's worth of food um, and now I just continue to, to just build it, to replenish it. I have a working pantry. So my pantry is everything that we eat and we cycle through. Um, from the flour to the sugar to the salt, the seasonings, um, and, and baking things to uh, canned goods to my home jarred foods um all the way to snacks and goodies for the kids and you know chips and um drinks lemonades you know fruit juices all of it all of it um i have a rotating working pantry and when i go to fill it i only fill it and restock when things i can get on sale um i buy in bulk i buy on sale and this book was such a blessing to me. And I had no idea. You know, I, I, I look back at that Heather in July of 2020. Uh, and I see how the Holy Spirit was moving and working and preparing me, preparing my body. You know, I was I was getting really fit. I was lifting weights. I was, you know, here I thought, oh, I'm going to be in the best shape of my life. And I didn't know that God was putting me in the best shape of my life for the accident that I was about to endure, for the trauma, for the impact of 130 miles an hour head on. And I didn't know that the Lord was helping me build this pantry so that my babies could eat the food that they loved so that the loved ones that came in and out of this house and tag teamed in and out helping would have to not have to worry about you know well what kind of spaghetti sauce do they like or what kind of you know what do the kids like to drink what kind of chips do they? everything was here so I wanted to share this with you on the other side because I'm on the other side of it now I can look back and 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 I can see I can see all that preparation and I know so many of you right now are in a season of, of preparation you're in a season of wanting to put food by you're in a season that you want that security and I want to make this very 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 clear the energy that you put into everything you do from cooking food to cleaning your house to you know loving on your kids to everything you do the heart intention behind it will shine through so I want to be an encourager for you to build your pantry out of joy out of love out of security um, it is the best insurance policy but if you build your pantry out of fear, out of panic, out of anxiety, out of stress, 
every time you walk in that room, every time you prepare that food, that is what you're going to feel. So I cannot stress enough to you, surround yourself with people who embody a, a positive mindset to building a pantry. It does not have to be overwhelming. It does not have to be scary. It does not have to be stressful. It can be a joyful experience. I love stocking a pantry and I liken it um, to almost like if, um, if your mom were to give you, you know, a hundred dollars, you're, you're going off and, you know, here's a hundred dollars in case something happens. That hundred dollars security would be like, oh yeah, th this is great. A hundred dollars. Yeah. This is great to have an extra hundred dollars in my pocket. Now, what if your mom gave you $500 and said, here, have $500. Spend it on whatever you want. This is for security. So you have it on hand. You'd be like, oh, $500. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I feel a lot better having $500 in my pocket than, than $100. Now, what if somebody gave you $10,000? Your mom gave you $10,000 and said, here, put this by for in case of an emergency. 10000 would feel a whole lot different than a hundred and to me like my pantry is like that ten thousand dollar you know <laughs> money on the side that's how I look at my pantry and I've expanded my pantry and she talks about this in this book um, I go through it uh, the, this book in the other video so I, I won't I won't repeat it. Um, I'll let you just, I'll give you a link to the other video. Um, but she um, makes mention of expanding your pantry, expanding your pantry into your, into like your kitchen and your cleaning products, right? Your uh, dishwasher soap and your, you know, for me, I use uh, Dawn Blue, Blue Dawn, <laughs> you know, those kinds of things like your vinegars, things like that, down into your laundry room your washing detergent, your, um, you know, if you use uh, fabric softener sheets or liquid, um, cleaning products, napkins, paper towels, Kleenex, toilet paper, um, all those things. And then for me, I've expanded into having a backup. I have a year's supply of um, water softener um, uh, salt. And my, um, I have a whole house, um, water filter. I have a whole year supply of water filters. I have, you know, batteries. Um, I have a battery case that I, I keep full at all times with batteries. Things that you can expand on. And this book is really going to help you do that. I know there are a lot of books out there. This one for me, when I bought it, was so easy to understand. It was broken down so well. Um, and she does it with such joy that there's no stress in it. After our tragedy, if there's one thing that I've learned is that life is very short and you can sit here and, um, and worry and, and stress and have anxiety, um, and fear, but I promise you it is not going to serve you at all. In fact, it's going to hinder you. You're going to make bad decisions. You're going to make rash decisions. You're not going to think things through. Panic buying is like one of the worst things you can do. Um, and I am anti-fear mongering. There is no reason to have fear. We are, and we are told in the Bible, we are not to have fear. And fear is something the enemy likes to whisper. And I, and I have noticed that a lot of times, a lot of this fear mongering that we, it, it just seems to be coming at us in all directions. It always lacks faith. You cannot have fear and faith in the same. And I, I know I've, I, I might sound like a broken record on that, but my mindset has changed so much since, um, since our tragedy and everything we've been through and I, everything I've experienced. And life is short. And your pantry should be joyful. And uh, it should be a blessing, not a curse. It should bring you joy to walk into your pantry, not anxiety. Um, 
everything you do, do to the glory of God. Everything you do, do for the love of your family. I hope that this, these words are an encouragement to someone out there. It just laid heavy on my heart and I, I kind of felt like I just needed to turn on the camera, share this one more time. Um, now that I'm on the other end of a tragedy that um, we heavily depended on our pantry for, and not just our pantry, but our extended, our extended pantry, like toilet paper and napkins and all those things that um, my loved ones didn't have to worry about when they came here. Um, it was really smooth and, uh, and it was such a blessing. And um, I know this is this this is a message. This video is a message for one of you out there. I can feel it. I can feel it on my heart. So I'm hoping that uh, this was a blessing to you. And if you have any questions or you want me to talk about anything else more specific when it comes to the pantry, let me know down below um, as I'm getting back into the the swing of things. Um, I just. From my experience, I, I kind of feel like I have a different perspective on a lot of things. Um, but I'm not sure. I guess I, 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 I'm not sure where I'm fitting in <laughs> lately here. And what I can bring to the table to all of you. Um, that isn't like me just kind of repeating myself or boring you. Time is the one thing you can't get back. And I promise you, I promise you, if you ever wake up from a coma or laying, goodness forbid, on your deathbed, the one thing that you wish you could have back is time. And, um, and I remember laying there saying I'd give anything anything to be back in my kitchen canning or kneading a loaf of bread or organizing my pantry I'd give anything to sit at the kitchen table and play a, a, a board game with the kids I'd give anything just to have snuggle time back or rainy days with a blanket and a book and one of my kiddos you know I those are all the things that I uh, that I longed for and by the grace of God I was able to get back and so um, I just want to be words of encouragement to you today and grab this book it's inexpensive I'll leave a link down below and for my inner circle members maybe this is going to be the giveaway for this month of August because I've been liking uh been enjoying giving uh, uh, things away um to the inner circle members of um this channel but I love you guys um I hope you found this helpful and uh I'll be seeing you soon all right God bless